Number five, Chateau de Montségur, a petite and quaint fortress in southern France, sitting atop a 170 meter drive uphill. Its ruins now nothing but rock and rubble, but once a safe house for the Cathars. The Cathar vision of the universe was dualist, in that good and light confronts evil and darkness. Right? Pretty straightforward. Very Jedi of them. This belief led them to follow a very disciplined way of life. Before, of course, they were decimated from the Catholic Church, initiated by Pope Innocent III. Innocent, huh? The ruins nickname now, Satan's Synagogue. Yeah, nice and light right off the top, huh Kyle? Described as one of the last Cathar castles, and has been listed as a monument historique by the French Ministry of Culture. Cathar, from Greek meaning pure, these people were devote. In 1233, the site became the seat and head of the Cathar Church. The fort roughly housed about 500 people during this time. In 1242, a military of about 10,000 troops fought against the castle that was held up by only 100 Cathars. So like very Jedi all of a sudden. The siege lasted nine months. Until two years later, the castle finally surrendered. North of 200 Cathars were burned in a giant bonfire, unless they renounced and changed their faith. Some taking the Cathar vow just weeks before this. Those who renounced the Cathar faith were allowed to leave, but the castle itself destroyed. The field below, now famously known to have been where the hundreds of men and women were burned alive. The apparent bonfire that happened sparked a curse from the Cathar peoples. Legends of these ruins say, any person who strays off the marked footpaths of these ruins and loses their footing will drop off of every side of the citadel in the sky. Sounds more like a metaphor to me than a curse. Number four, Karamekos. As always, if you like what we do here on Top 5 Scary, throw us a thumbs up down below or leave us a comment to ponder over. Halloween's just next week. Which haunted house does it for you? Churches do it for me, you know, churches. I don't do creepy, creaky churches, you know? So many floorboards. Okay, so this planet is like old, old. We're finding things and sites that are literally changing history textbooks as we speak. Gobekli Tepe, Petra, like Syria and Turkey, these places are old, but Greece? Greece is like ancient old. Newsweek reported that in 2020, a collection of more than 30 inscribed tablets were found at the bottom of a 3,000 year old Athenian well in the ancient cemetery of Karamikos. Yeah, scary enough, right? You see these tablets bear individual curses and prayers to the Greek gods of the underworld. So all sorts of nasty energy just floating the top there. Juta Strawzek, who led the excavation, said that whoever ordered the curses inscribed on the tablets was unnamed. But the black magic seen, heard, and felt at the site is present there for all to research. Even though back then black magic and the use of curses was forbidden in Greece during that time, which makes this even more horrifying. Just refound in 2016, the cemetery itself was first excavated in 1870 from the Greek ministry. Progress halted during World War II, and the excavation then lost momentum. The excavation site consists of a massive sanctuary holding thousands of precious artifacts. Keramikos comes from the Greek word for pottery or ceramics, arguably the most important cemetery of ancient Athens, riddled with the oldest tombs and curses that went along with them. There's always like adultery feuds too, isn't there? I curse thee, Demetria, for looking at my Adonis. Like lots of jealousy and lying back then it seems. Number three, the vanishing village. Way up north, a village named after a bountiful massive freshwater lake in Canada's Nunavut, 1932. A Canadian fur trapper and explorer went to the village of Anjakuni Lake, the peoples known there for their markets of elaborate fish and extensive wine. This village was a staple for most on the map. Joe Labelle, a well-known fur trapper and well-known in the village, had an otherworldly sight when he arrived. He arrived and sensed something was a little wrong, a little too quiet, too foggy. He found that the village was completely emptied and deserted, even though there were lots of signs of life still present. Campfires blazing, pots still boiling, doors were even open, and food out waiting to be served. Thousands of Anjakuni villagers had simply vanished. He sent a telegraph to the closest RCMP office and told them about his account. And here's the scary part. They launched an official investigation which was never solved. They took a testimony from another trapper and his two sons who said they saw a large cylindrical object transform into a bullet shape before flying directly over Anjakuni Lake. At the village, the police found the kayaks were still on the beach, meals still in the early stages of rot, and apparently the headstones were even stacked neatly in piles on either side of the graves. Uh, okay? 
To this day, there's no proper explanation for this mass disappearance of people and the hundreds of empty graves. Number two, Skeleton Lake. Deep within the Himalayas of India lays the bay of an ancient lake, shrouded by an ancient mystery, Rupkund Lake famously known as Skeleton Lake. It was rediscovered by the British forest rangers in 1942, and what they found was pretty jarring. Hundreds of ancient human skeletons found at the edge of the lake. Investigations led some to think that this was a catastrophe of some sort, or the remains of a legendary event where a group was suddenly killed in a violent storm around the 9th century. Nope! Three different groups of people died here all at different times. It's not located on or near a trade route, no evidence of any ancient bacteria pathogen, ruling out diseases. Yeah, this one's really weird. One group of people had genetics to present day South Asia, while the other group related to the people of Central Europe. And finally, a group particularly from the Greek island of Crete. But how? All here? They found the bones and deaths were genetically separated in time by as much as a thousand years difference. Wooden artifacts, iron spearheads, even slippers and jewelry were found by the National Geographic team who studied 30 skeletons in 2003. Skin still on some of them. Oof. 300 people have been found so far. Legend goes, Parvati, a supreme goddess, cursed the kingdom, unleashing drought and disaster upon them. She sent down a blizzard of hail and whirlwind, which swept the people into the lake. Their skeletons are a warning to those who disrespect the goddess. I mean, maybe. The skeletons are visible in the clear water of the shallow lake during one month when the ice melts. That's terrifying. I'm gonna chicken out right now and just never visit this place. Just show up and get Jack Skellington? Are you kidding me? No way, dude. And number one, the city of screams. Top of my relaxing trip list, Golgla City, Afghanistan. Peaceful once as it was the capital of the Gorid people until Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire seized it in about the 12th century. Apparently legend goes its ruler, Jalaladin Mangburnu, fought back and apparently killed Khan's grandson in battle. Yeah, probably not a good idea. In 1221, Khan sent his 15 year old Mudu Khan here to claim and siege who in turn, was shot and killed with an arrow, precipitating the siege of Bam Yan. At first, the city held strong, but was apparently sold out by the ruler's daughter, who, according to legend, betrayed the castle's secret entrance, sharing and consorting with the enemy. Expecting to be rewarded, her and her people were unfortunately slaughtered. And the ruins, cursed, of course. And the ruins, cursed, of course. The Russians, the Taliban, and the Americans have all used these ruins as fighting posts over the years, as this place hasn't been lived in since. But through them is apparently very haunted, the ruins subject to those who still hear the screams of the fallen. Yeah, terrifying. Haunting sounds of screaming and warfare are echoed here, thus giving it its famous name of the City of Screams. Dark horseback figures to even full-on uniform specters are seen atop the rubble. Yeah, I'd just say we just avoid this place completely and just kinda back away slowly out of respect, you know? Number five on this list is Tranquil Sanatorium in British Columbia. Tranquil Sanatorium has quite an extensive and tragic history to it, which has caused its walls to be the home to many undead spirits. A sanatorium, if you weren't familiar, is an establishment which has the sole purpose of housing those with long-term illnesses and is often associated with tuberculosis. The one that we're talking about right now is no different. It was built in 1907 as a facility to treat people with tuberculosis. However, it didn't stay like this for very long. The purpose of the facility eventually changed to become an insane asylum. It acted as this mental institute for a while until finally becoming abandoned in the late 1980s. Due to its deep history with death, disease, mental illness, it's no wonder that the Tranquil Sanatorium is now deeply haunted. The layout of this facility screams something out of a Stephen King book. It has several buildings that are connected by poorly lit underground tunnels. The building is itself looks all too eerie from the outside as well with dirty cream colored walls that have seen far better days as rot and mold slowly devour them. Visitors of this place report feeling extremely uneasy. A common note for most people that visit is the presence of orbs. Strange balls of light that flutter throughout the building and then disappear. Some people have reported seeing a ghostly apparition on the sixth floor. This ghost takes the form of a woman not older than 30. She appears to be crying and 
screaming. The tunnels are said to be particularly haunted. People have reported screams coming from nowhere, flashes of movement, menacing and animalistic groans that make you feel as if somebody is right behind you. Children can also be heard playing every now and again in some of the more open areas of the building. Clearly this place's dark history has impacted it greatly and just because physical humans decided to abandon it in the 80s doesn't mean that it was truly abandoned for good. Number 4. Kamau Papa in 1866, during the reign of Kamehameha V, Hawaiian officials passed a law designating this island the official site for patients affected with leprosy. Kalau Papa, a small peninsula in the north shore of Molokai, has quite a bitter and spooky history. The king exiled those who contracted Hansen's disease here, noting it was the ideal spot secluded and surrounded by the highest cliffs in the world. The peninsula served as a natural outdoor prison, accessible only by one steep path by foot, or boat to shore. About 1,200 families were exiled to quarantine here. At the time, the disease wasn't really understood, believing it to be very incurable. Whisked off and locked away amid paradise in total isolation. No amenities, no buildings, or even potable water. Known by historians who visit it as, quote, the pit of hell itself. And apparently the most cursed place on earth. Yeah, I didn't know that. With this grim history of loneliness, despair, and death, it's not really surprising at all that Kalau Papa is said to be one of the most haunted places in all of Hawaii. This island was basically a death sentence for those on it. Shackles, cages, caves, sounds about right to be haunted by the afterlife. Number three. Three on this list is the Five Fishermen Restaurant. This is a restaurant in Halifax, Nova Scotia, known for its exceptional oysters and also its ghostly inhabitants. The ground that this restaurant sits on wasn't always utilized for serving up fish and chips though. In fact, it has a very long history. In the early 1800s is when the building went up and for a long time it acted as the town's only school. Nothing ghoulish or demonic about that. However, at around the turn of the century the school moved and the building took on a new purpose. It became the mortuary for Halifax and made its dealings with the dead. Now not every mortuary is going to become haunted, but this one had quite a lot to deal with over the years. In 1912 the unsinkable ship, the Titanic, sunk. It sunk roughly 640 kilometers off of the eastern shores of Canada and therefore the closest places to assist with the rescue was these eastern provinces. Halifax acted as the leader in these rescue processes and because of that the mortuary had an onslaught of bodies of people whom had died on the ship. Five years after that tragedy, Halifax incurred one of their own with the massive Halifax explosion. This was where a munitions ship exploded and it killed roughly 2,000 people just like that. This mortuary served as the primary designation for both of these incidents and due to the unnatural deaths here, it makes sense that some spirits have clung on. Guests and employees alike have reported seeing ghosts all over this mortuary that turned restaurant. One of the dishwashers reported running out of the restaurant when he looked up from what he was doing and was staring directly at a ghost like Spectre. The restaurant has attempted to have serious renovations done, however I don't think that any amount of structural change will get these spirits to rest for good. Number two on this list is the Frank Slide. Now even though the Frank Slide sounds like it could be a fun, popular dance move that takes over TikTok for a few weeks, it is far more morbid than that. On April 29th in 1903 in the mining town of Frank, which at that time was part of the Northwest Territories but it is now a section of Alberta, there was a horrible tragedy. 110 million tons of limestone and rock came tumbling down in one of Canada's biggest landslides ever. This fell onto part of the town of Frank. Frank was located right next to Turtle Mountain, which after extensive mining had grown unstable. On April 29th, it all came crashing down and claimed the lives of 70 to 90 people. It is still to this day Canada's most deadly landslide to ever occur in history and was a horrible tragedy that can only remind us how fleeting life can be. I think the craziest part about this landslide as well is that it wasn't just miners who were killed. Their wives, their families, all of them died at the hands hands of the Frank Slide. The remains of these bodies were never recovered either as the damage from the slide was far too devastating. Where all of this happened is now a section of a town called Crow's Nest Pass and over a century later the ghosts of the dead still haunt the area. This place is somewhere where visitors have reported feeling very unsafe. They say that the overall feelings of uneasiness are almost too much to bear and that they have to leave. Cries howls, screams, this can all be heard late at night as you're trying to sleep. Lanterns will be seen in the night walking around at the hands of unknown apparitions. It is basically a full 
ghost town of people who never deserved to die in the first place, all wanting to get a second just to feel their lives again as they were so unfairly ripped away from them. Definitely one of Canada's most horrific tragedies, and now home to one of its most haunted locations. Number one on this list is the Banff Springs Hotel. This hotel is located in Banff, Alberta, and is truly one of the creepiest places that I've ever read about. Now, first off, I want to note the hotel itself looks gorgeous on the outside. The beautiful nature it is surrounded by is stunning, and the hotel gives me some serious Harry Potter Hogwarts vibes. However, when I say that this place is surrounded by nature, I really mean it. It is totally out on its own, with no other buildings in sight at all. The secluded site has been around for 132 years and has housed its fair share of visitors. Some of these visitors have had some incredible stays. I mean, when you look it up online, the hotel has a 4.7 Google rating, so I mean, it's pretty freaking good. Some of the guests, though, they never checked out. In the 1920s, a couple was set to have their wedding at this hotel. On the day of the ceremony, though, the bride, while she was walking down one of the hotel's beautiful marble staircases, tripped and fell, smacking her head on her descent and dying on the spot. This bride's spirit is one of the most notable sightings people have had when they're staying at this hotel. It's it's said that they often see a phantom in a wedding dress ascending and descending the stairs very quickly. She's also been seen in the ballroom, dancing alone, potentially dreaming of the dance that she wanted so desperately to have with the husband that she never got to marry. In 1975, a longtime bellman of the Hotel Sam died there. Since then, sightings of Sam have been pretty consistent. One story details how two women lost their room key and called the front desk to go and get it. The front desk person sent someone to go and open their room for these ladies. When that person had got there though, the ladies were already in the room and said that another bellman had let them in. They described Sam to a T when they spoke about the bellman who helped them out. Instances like this have occurred time and time again at the hotel with many people believing his spirit is still working there. Finally with this hotel, you have room 873. Room 873 is rumored to be the home of a gruesome murder. One evening a family was staying there and the father for some unknown reason lost his mind murdering his family and himself. After completely refurbishing the room, the hotel put it back in service. But now people who have stayed there report hearing the screams and the cries as if they were still dying. If you have to stay at this hotel, definitely avoid room 873. Number 5. Leap Castle. There are a ton of old haunted castles in Europe, isn't there? Like that was someone's house at some point. You gotta think, those chamber pots have been used for like a thousand years. Ugh, yuck. And of course, some dark and nasty history has gone down there at these places as well. You can feel it almost most of the time. Leap Castle, Ireland, built around 1250. Our first stone cold stop. This place has seen its fair share of bloodshed. Not just one ghost story, and not just a foe, but a friend. Well, family, actually. One of the most lived in castles in Ireland. It's seen some sh it's housed many a family, generation after generation, apparently built by the O'Bannon family way back. Legend has it, two brothers dared each other to jump off a cliff for house rights. Yeah, more of a myth, I think. Then comes the O'Carroll family. Now we get into some actual literature. Father dies, powerful family, no successor to take the castle. However, this turned into yet another brother versus brother kind of duel. Couple stabbings around the castle's chapel and enter stage left, lots of ghosts. Ruthless, right? The smell of burning and decay now apparently. The spirit of the murdered priest now lurks the stairwell isn't often reported by staff as a slain brother. What's with the brothers thing? Among the ghostly figures is also Emily and Charlotte, the ghosts of two girls playing in the main hall circa 1600s era. The most famous afterlife resident, the Red Lady. There have been sightings of this creature for centuries. She roams in a long red dress tall and lean. The red lady carries a huge dagger as well, with her hand raised. Can you imagine? Stone cold castle, middle of the night, just scrolling through Instagram after a nice Airbnb night, and you look up to a red ghost lady holding a knife at you. Yeah, I would just like cartoon run on air, you know? Number four on this list is the Firkins House. The Firkins House is part of Fort Edmonton Park, which, you guessed it, is located in Edmonton, Alberta. Fort Edmonton Park is a little tourist attraction that has buildings from 1885, 1905, and 1920 to represent the homes of the time. One of the houses is the Firkins House. This home is interesting because during my research, I couldn't find any particular evidence of wrongdoings or tragic events at this home. 
home. In fact, for the most part, it seems like a pretty normal house. People have lived there before and no harm has befell them, but it seems that after they moved out and the home was donated, that's when things started to go a little bit haywire. There are reportedly three ghosts or demons that haunt this home, each one scarier and more dangerous than the next. The first one is the ghost of a beautiful floating woman who is dressed in all white. People have said that they've spotted her in the windows of the home looking out at them or slowly drifting throughout the living room. The second one is the ghost of a little boy. The boy will appear to certain people looking extremely ill. It is currently unknown if this boy died in and around the area or what disease he is suffering from, but it is said that he resides in the home with the woman in white. The third being is by far the scariest of all three. A ventriloquist dummy that will appear in the home or in the cupboards. This thing can move all by itself and talk by itself. It is very similar to the popular horror franchise Chucky and it's said by some to be seeking to harm the living. I'm not sure if the ghost of the ventriloquist has taken over this dummy or if the dummy has taken on its own persona, but I definitely do not want to go anywhere where the primary residence is a demon puppet. Number three. Kaibuki House. This Halloween, if you're trick-or-treating, listen to old Uncle Kyle and do not go near this house. Located in the Kaimuki neighborhood of Honolulu, Hawaii, this place has a horrifying reputation. Apparently, murder and a most foul nature has occurred in the house. Many times. Murder case after disappearance, the local stories became fiction. It's now known by locals as the most haunted place on the island. And here's why. The house itself looks like a normal surf-friendly home. Mmm, yeah, not really. Enter stage right, the Kasha. The Kasha is a creature said to reside in the actual house. It's a man-eating ghost from Japanese folklore. Not just story, the events from the Kaimuki house have been documented. Well documented. Interpretations of the monster includes a ghoul who lives and feeds on the dead. A cat-like demon from the sky who steals away bodies. However, all three versions have one thing in common. It's hunger for corpses. Ooh. In 1942, police officers were called to the house by a woman who apparently kept repeating, she's trying to get my children. Upon entering the house, the officers could do nothing but apparently watch in horror as the members of the family were all levitating and ragdolled and hurled across the room by an unknown force. The police were baffled and decided to just load everybody up in the car and leave the premises. The original Kaimuki house was torn down during the summer of 2016 and has since yet been under investigation and new construction. Okay. So no vacation in Hawaii this summer. No did. Number two, Ancient Ram Inn. Of course we needed an ancient old haunted inn, didn't we? Isn't this the start of like every great horror movie? The lights flicker in an old haunted inn in the middle of nowhere. The bell dings, but no one answers. Should have been a writer. Well, luckily this is also a functioning pub and it's located in Watton Under Edge, a market town within the district of Gloucestershire, England. Look at this place. It's like bending and molding to the earth, like a fence that's grown around a tree. This thing is old. Old. The inn has been owned and operated by many people. Going back as far as a thousand years, since like 1145. <whistles> Hope they clean their beer taps. This inn was said to have been owned by the St. Mary's Church when first built. And of course, with that, it's haunted. The Ancient Ramp Inn has been investigated by years of paranormal researchers. Television shows like Ghost Adventures and Most Haunted. The inn was investigated by UK paranormal study group, The Ghost Club which is apparently the oldest paranormal research organization in the world. It's haunted, haunted. But what makes something haunted? Is it the age or the sinister events that happened in and around the premises? This land sits on the intersection of two lines that people think contain high spiritual energy. Using a map, of course, these lines trace directly to England's most sacred site, Stonehenge. Legend has it that the energy from Stonehenge feeds the property's paranormal power. Not to mention, the backyard is home to a 5,000-year-old pagan burial ground. Witches being burned at the stake on the property. Hey, if you see a pagan ghoul pouring himself a Guinness in the middle of the night, just say cheers and keep walking. Number one, Bran Castle. It's October, so we're feeling extra spooky around here at Top 5 Scary. We're familiar with the classics, right? If we're not, go and binge some horror movie marathons, people. The castle of all castles, Dracula. Well, kinda. What Dracula was based off of, where he lived at least. Also, the National Monument of Romania itself. Hmm, fun fact. It doesn't get much more Halloween-y than this place, come on. Bran Castle is linked to the historical figure who inspired author Bram Stoker's creation of this half-bat, half-man. No, not Batman. Vlad III, Dracula. Otherwise known as Vlad the Impaler. Don't panic. This was like a couple years back, like mid-1400s. We know this guy, and yes, you heard it right, the Impaler. I don't really need to get into much detail with this one. To impale. 
Google it. Some believe Brand Castle was one of the sites which Vlad reigned. Unfortunately, history says that he wasn't around here. In fact, it says that he was only imprisoned here for a little bit. Yeah, although there's no coffins inside. Hmm. So what makes this place so scary? Apparently during Stoker's research to the region of Transylvania, he came across accounts of the atrocities committed by Vlad and used the Dracula name after studying him. And of course, this castle built out of wood originally, somewhere around the 11th, 12th century, seems to be pretty fitting upon research of the old haunted castles territory. Unfortunately, this thousand year old home isn't really a home anymore, just home to relics now, and the occasional cold breeze and fuzzy camera picture. Brand Castle acts as a museum now and a popular Halloween destination. Apparently they found a gold casket that houses the heart of Romania's Queen Marie in the walls. Yeah, that's pretty haunted castle material, no?